Hi, everybody. We're so excited to have you here today with us. I'm Beth Waitla Fever. I'm the Training and Implementation Specialist for PRC Saltillo, and I'm here with Sarah Gregory. And this is the last of our May guest webinars from PRC Saltillo to celebrate Better Hearing and Speech Month. So I'm going to run through some housekeeping slides, and then I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. First of all, if you would have trouble hearing or connecting to this class, I would say log out of GoToWebinar, log back in. Now, if that doesn't fix it, you're going to want to turn your computer all the way off, turn it back on, log back in to GoToWebinar. If that doesn't help, unfortunately, um, we'd ask that you call Log Me In because we aren't able to troubleshoot any further with you. You will find the handouts for this class in the toolbar section of the Go to Training or Go to Webinar panel. And at the end of the class, when you leave, there will be a feedback survey that pops up. So we really hope you'll take a couple of minutes and fill that out for us. We review that and that helps us design our trainings for the future. If you have questions, type those in the question box. And there are lots of people on this class today, so we don't know if we're going to really get to answer individual questions, but feel free to type them in and we will do the best that we can. Uh, we want to talk a minute about ASHA CEUs. So if you are a speech pathologist and you use the ASHA CEU registry to track your CEUs, you will need to stay online and connected to the webinar the entire time. Now, if you have a sound problem and you log off and log back in, that is fine. GoToWebinar does track your attendance, so we do need you to be on, you know, most of the time. Also, you need to submit your ASHA form within 15 days, and this is really important, include the training date on that form. The instructions and the form can be found in the handout section of the GoToWebinar toolbar. And another important detail, make sure that you put the name of the webinar and the date in the subject line of your email when submitting the CEU form to info at printrom.com. We have had lots and lots of trainings over the past several weeks, and so we want you to get credit for attending the webinar. So again, you need to make sure and follow the directions. So feel free to use the question box um, to chat out questions. Lisa Tim, the uh, manager for training and implementation here at PRC Saltillo will be manning that with me, so we will be getting back with you. And I'm so excited to introduce Sarah Gregory. We planned this webinar very quickly, and we were so grateful she was available. Um, you may know her from her YouTube channel. She's been doing a lot of information, sharing information about what she does in teletherapy. And so I'm going to turn it over to Sarah so she can share all of that great info with us. All right, great. So I am super excited to be here. Um, very thankful for PRC Saltillo to host the webinar, and I'm excited to talk about all the things that I've learned in just the last two months. Um, so I have put my social media links there. I also have my email at the end of this, um, uh, end of the presentation. Just like Beth said, I don't think we'll be able to get to questions, but I am really happy to talk to anybody about anything, answer questions or anything you think I could do to help you. Um, so please feel free to reach out. One of the best things in the past couple of months since I've started sharing all this stuff on YouTube is that when somebody reaches out to me with a question, it's normally something that I don't know the answer to, and then I figure it out and learn something new. So um, I'm very happy uh, to talk that way. Uh, I guess I didn't introduce myself really. So I'm a speech pathologist in the Ithaca City School District um, in upstate New York. I'm also the assistive tech um, consultant for our district. So my direct caseload is preschool students. Um, so that's normally where my frame of reference is, is the younger students, but I did include um, things for sort of a broader age range and my disclosures. So I'm receiving compensation from PRC Saltillo for this webinar. Um, I have my full-time salary from the Ithaca City School District, and I have received free trials of apps and therapy products. Non-financial disclosures are that I'm a member of ASHA and um, ASHA SIG 12. Our learner outcomes are hopefully at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to list strategies to engage AAC learners in specifically teletherapy, um, utilize digital materials, and to provide modeling or aided language stimulation in teletherapy. The slides are linked and every resource that I have, there's tons of things linked in this presentation. Everything is in a wakelet. 
which this is a new tool for me. I'm very excited about it. It's kind of like a Pinterest board of all the resources from the presentation. Um, Alyssa Warren, who's an ATOT, just showed me about this. Um, so if you check that out, you don't need a login. Um, the QR code, if you open the camera on your phone and put it to the QR code, it'll take you right to the Wakelet. And that's the bit.ly, the slides are also in there. So kind of an overview of what we're gonna be talking about is almost everything in this presentation is something that I learned in the last two months. So we're really, I probably all feel like we're building the plane while it's flying, which is really stressful and overwhelming. It's hard to learn new therapy tools, let alone a therapy platform. Um, you know, we all, are comfortable with modeling and the the materials that we have and so it's been really hard to flip that and I'm something I'm really trying to do is to not be overwhelmed and to sort of learn one thing at a time because I think it's easy especially on social media as you see somebody post something where they have like their modeling up and their videos and they have a green screen background and I'm like I can never do that um so I really want to look at tips and tricks that will be engaging in therapy but also be manageable for us um so something why i'm really excited to be presenting and kind of why i've shared things on youtube is that when school buildings first closed i noticed that there was just this huge sharing of resources among our aac community and i was so appreciative and inspired by it especially people that had been already doing teletherapy it seemed like they were staying up all day and night to like answer people's questions on instagram and i just thought you know that was so generous and so inspiring so when i started making videos for my district website i thought oh i'll just put them on youtube and maybe they'll help somebody and uh luckily it seems like they they have been helpful so that's been great so like i mentioned like six times my youtube channel so a lot of the things that i'm going to mention it's going to be an overview of an activity but i'm not in this webinar going to talk about the specifics of how to do things because it's already on youtube and i don't want to take up the time of this webinar to do that so that we can end up sharing more um so if there's an activity that you see that you're interested that you want to be able to recreate or you want more tips just look for that youtube link so that's linked in the slides and it's also in the weeklet. So in terms of managing teletherapy, I'm gonna talk a bit about ways to model, how I've found to make it manageable. I'm using Google Meet. So first of all, I'm not gonna share anything in this webinar that you can only do in Google Meet or that you can only do in Zoom. It's really not specific to any platform or really AAC system. Um, so I'm, the examples that I have here are PRC and Saltillo products, but I'm sure you'll see that a lot of the things that are shared, you could adapt to whatever system you have for each of your students. Um, so in Google Meet, it's kind of hard to share a bunch of windows. So I find if I have a window with like a boom card that's doing a bunch of animation, and then I have my dynamic display modeling, and then I have my client and I see them start to fade and walk away, it really is. A, like the mental load is huge. So anything we can do to prep for how, if we can build the modeling in so that we're not doing it in person, um, I think is really helpful. Another tip is don't put all of your eggs in one 30 minute teletherapy basket. So especially when I started this teletherapy journey a few months ago, I felt like my 30 minutes had to be jam packed with everything that I would have ever done in school. Um, and that felt like a lot of pressure. So there's things that we can think about, like how can we support parents? How can these goals be supported at home? Which I think is a huge silver lining of distance learning right now is that I'm seeing parents are so much more um, just engaged in what's going on just because they're there, they're witnessing the therapy session happening and that it's really paying off in the carryover and generalization that's happening. So it also doesn't have to mean more work. So I'm gonna talk about this, especially at the very end of the webinar, that what I do in teletherapy, how I'm organizing it in Google Slides, at the end of my session, I can just copy that slide deck and send it to the parents or the family caregivers, whoever's with um, the AAC learner so that they have already seen these games or activities interacted with, they see what words I've modeled with them. And then I think it makes it easier to recreate it at home. And also I'm not necessarily planning for two separate things. So 
Another quick thing is I am going to be linking lots of people's social media. Um, I watched Lauren Ender's webinar last week and I really liked how she had a little key. So I kind of stole that idea from her and I have linked for whatever site you can find different people on. Because like I said, so people are sharing so much and that's, I'm not just making this stuff up off the top of my head. I'm getting it from other people. So everything that I've seen from somebody else I'm linking where I got it from so that if you want ideas of other people to follow and where you can get other resources, see that. And also, if you don't want to be writing them down um, right now, get the slides and everything is like clickable links in the slides. So for coaching and support at home, I think that that's, like I said, a great silver lining of teletherapy. This AAC coach is one of my favorite things for that generalization because also, I think that this time has forced me at least to really think about what I can suggest at home to really be integrated into what they're already doing. I don't want to give them their classwork and then also be like, and this is speech homework that you have to sit down and find a time to do. If we can do things like morning routine um, that they're already doing and just give some simple tips and examples of words that they can use, um, I think is has been really helpful for me. So. Another tip, I got this question at our PRC town hall last week um, about for people who are feeling overwhelmed with the tech. And like when I say Google Slides and Boom Cards, if you're like not feeling good about that, that's okay. One of my biggest pieces of advice is to pick one piece of tech per activity. So you could be doing some different things throughout your, your teletherapy activity. I might start with pulling up a dynamic display system as I'm talking to the child and saying, what did you do over the weekend? Did you play in the rain yesterday? And so I'm just talking and modeling. I don't have a book pulled up. I don't have a YouTube video pulled up. This example here is you can read a physical book. Don't feel like just because we're on the computer that everything has to be digital. Um, you can play with like little toys. I mean, the things that my kids like to watch on YouTube drives me crazy, but like sometimes it's people playing with toys, kids like that. That's another thing that Lauren mentioned in her webinar. And I thought, you know, that's totally true. It drives my, me crazy when my kids do this on YouTube. But if that's engaging for our kids um, to see you like physically manipulating things, then let's do it. So for this example, Dear Zoo, I might read the physical book and provide my modeling then when I go to my boom card and I'm doing something that's more interactive, I could either be asking somebody who's with the AAC user, I could be saying, can you just be modeling open for me on every card? Um, or pull up a physical board. Um, you could print out something, like take a screenshot with your vocabulary builder on. I really like this board because the flip side is the full version. This side that I'm showing has a lot of icons hidden so that even though you can't really see great where I'm pointing, you can kind of get like a general idea. So this isn't necessarily to help the student. It might be, but it also a lot of our prompts and models could be to prompt the support person to then prompt on the device. Um, because I do feel like this was in one of my previous slides and I forgot to mention it, but um, if it feels overwhelming to you and it's hard to look at your client's video and look at your activity and look at your system, um, it's probably overwhelming for the student too because not only do they have their system up on the screen, they have their system in front of them. So if that's something that you're comfortable with and you feel like it's working, that's great. For me, I feel like pulling back on how many things I'm trying to juggle at once has been really helpful. So this boom card, AAC, SLPs, SoCal on Instagram, really great account to follow and also have a boom store um, that they're adding things to um, pretty regularly. So now I'm gonna talk about aided language stimulation and modeling. <laughs> to break it down kind of simply, aided language stimulation synonymous with aided language input is when we combine our verbal input with the AAC input. So if I'm saying, did you have a good weekend? I'm modeling what I'm, or kind of saying on the device what I'm saying verbally. Where modeling is more of a prompting strategy on that prompt hierarchy where you're say, showing a word like go that you want the student to then um, repeat. 
A lot of times these are used synonymously. I think that's okay. For this presentation, I will be using these um, terms interchangeably because anytime you pull up a system, you can be doing either one of those things. Um, and also, like I mentioned, to think about these strategies, not necessarily just to prompt um, the student for what words to go to, but it could be prompting the other person too. I have talked about in this YouTube video some different ways to model how to pull up different systems um, to do that aided language simulation. So now let's look at the two types of display options that we can be using for these things. We have our dynamic here. So you see that's interactive and the student can see the button sequence. So there's definitely huge positives for that because they're seeing the exact motor plan. Um, you're showing them exactly what you want them to be doing on the device. So that's great. Um, there's also just the option of doing something static um, where you have these arrows going to what the buttons are. And I'm going to talk about where I got that right here in the next slide. So these smart charts are on the AAC Language Lab, and I believe they're free. I put the link here in the slideshow, and they have them for 100 words, and they're all alphabetized. So this I really like because it's something that's static, and when I go through activities later, I'm going to show you how you can use these static um, boards pretty easily in some different interactive activities. Um, so I really love those. I think that's a great resource. You can also just take a screenshot of your device. Um, you could, like I said, hide some words and put it on Vocabulary Builder and take a screenshot. If, say, you're going to be talking about animals, then just go up to the anim animal page and take a screenshot. Some more static options are a new voice pass, which you can download for free on a PC. Um, to get your Unity and LAMP vocabularies. If you go to vocabulary, display options, and write with icons, you will be able to just type in the word play, and those two icons pop up and you can cut and paste. So I'm using that all the time um, to modify things and make different materials. The, you can do pretty much the same thing on chat editor um, by saying capture. So you push capture, and then you touch the icons. Um, this is a, another tip of good resources for you that I want to plug right now is your um, PRC or Saltillo consultants. And I'm not just saying that because some of them might be watching, but truly one of the best resources. I did not know how to do this on Sunday. And so I emailed um, the Saltillo rep in my regional area and I said, is there a way to, to use chat editor to do something like write with icons? And she sent me these screenshots so that I could put them in the presentation and share them. Um, so a great, great resource that you can access is, of course, your consultants. And so if you have questions about using new voice or chat editor, that's who you want to reach out to. You can also take this free pass class. There's so many things. I do not know how to do everything in um, new voice pass. I haven't watched that class and it's on my to-do list. Um, so that is something to check out. Okay, I'm losing my train of thought. These are our dynamic options. So of course, mentioned this multiple times. You got your new voice, your chat editor, you can also mirror on an iPad. So say you're on a Mac, so you can't get new voice. You can mirror your iPad. I have a YouTube video for that. I just made one yesterday with some tips of how to make your modeling a little bit more salient. Like you can turn on assistive touch or there's different ways to make the buttons kind of highlight for a little bit longer. The options for iPad mirroring are free option, lonely screen, paid option, reflector three. I had these two marked and that's exactly what Lauren Enders shared in hers. So I feel like they're good tips that we both landed on the same thing. Um, so lonely screen has this free pop, pop up that comes up once in a while. It doesn't really bother me for free. I know reflector three can do more things. Um, so if you wanna get that and then you could do AirPlay on a Mac to have your iPad be mirrored. Now, like I said yesterday, I think I made this video about mirroring your iPad. So this is sort of what I'm talking about when I say this overwhelms me because if I was in a teletherapy session, I would have these 
three things up plus my student that I'm trying to attend to and look at. And I feel like if I am turning the pages in a book, picking out core words to model, it's I'm losing some of the engagement with my student. So that's just me, how I feel. It overwhelms me. So I also do think that this stuff is really cool. So what I'm doing to kind of reconcile those two things is if I want to show a video, like show a book and show dynamic display modeling, I will do it in a pre-recorded video. And sometimes I've even shown that in my session so that I'm not Again, just that mental load. If I can show a quick two minute video with some dynamic display modeling and I'm not having to think on my feet to do it, then that helps me. And I also think it really helps with carryover. If I can pick a book and if I can plan ahead and know what I'm gonna do in teletherapy next week, then this week I might try to make a modeling video of it so that I can send home and kind of start that practice for my students. All right. So now, these are a few of my favorite teletherapy things. I want to make sure I'm good on where I thought I would be for time. Um, so again, I've said this, these um, activities that I'm going to be sharing for what I do in teletherapy are really things that I wasn't doing in school that I've just sort of discovered or learned in the past few months. And it really, it's a lot, it's overwhelming. Um, sometimes your brain feels like it's going to explode. I think I have 11 things that I'm going to show and I don't want anybody to feel like they have to take all of these things and integrate them. Try to pick some things that speak to you, some things that you think a specific client or student would like and make that be the thing that you walk away with and then know that these all these resources are collected for if in two weeks you wanna try something else um, because that's really been my approach is that, I think I mentioned that our district made a professional development website to just get people started with all the digital tools that they're gonna use. And it was three tiers and there's sort of professional goals for each tier. And the first one was, you know, basically like I can turn on a computer kind of thing. And so that's how I really took that and said, okay, that's what I need to do. I need to figure out how to log on to Google Meet and how to invite a family. So that was really what I started with the first week. I did not open the Boom Card website until maybe last week because for me, that was my third tier. That was like those highly interactive things. Um, I was just like, I can't, I can't do that. But now that I have been doing teletherapy for a while and I feel more comfortable with it, then I'm able to um, introduce some new things. So I really don't want this. I want to share a lot of activities, but I also don't want to overwhelm people. So if there's something that you're like, that looks complicated, some of these things you do have to pay for. If you decide I don't want to spend money, then, you know, just sort of look at your phone during that part and <laughs> take a little mental break. And then maybe the next thing will be something you want to try. So I also tried to keep things relatively um, simple and I hope easy to manage. So I'm gonna talk about Google Slides a lot. I really like having just one landing spot and one place where I'm doing a lot of things. My first week of teletherapy, I had like seven tabs pulled up. I would have Epic pulled up, I would have YouTube pulled up. And then as I'm logging off with one student and in with the next student, I'm like, shoot, these books are for keywords. And now I have a student who's using AAC and I wanted a different book. And it was really hard to manage. Um, so Slides is my best friend. Using GIFs in slides is really fun. I did it this morning. So the things to look at, Kim Rankin is the person I got this GIF idea from that her son's speech therapist used GIFs in therapy. And she said it was really fun and engaging. She posted that on her Facebook, Hold My Words. Great thing to follow. Her son uses AAC. She posts really awesome ideas. Um, so check that out on Facebook. This activity I did create so um, it's a Google slide activity. So you can click that link and download it. And then I also have a YouTube video on a lot of different Chrome extensions that I use to help me in teletherapy. So you can check that out because this Giphy is a Chrome extension. That's how I made this. So this is an example of the slide. So it's really simple. It's just a silly GIF. Um, the child I tried this with this morning really loved it. And then he uses LAMP. So 
I used right with icons to pull up the icon sequence. And the most awesome thing about this was that I feel like for me, sometimes the parent coaching part, I know that it's so important, but it can feel a little bit awkward that I don't want to be sitting there and being like telling somebody else what to do. So to find sort of more natural ways for that to happen is always something that I love to see. So for example, this morning, the parent that was with this child was like, oh, look, that's on your talker and um, set it right down in front of him. And she modeled just totally naturally that happened just because of this simple way that I set this up. So that's how I'm talking about things where you don't have to have your iPad mirrored and be modeling the icon sequence if there's sort of a simpler way, because this is all just in one Google side. So then I would click to the next one. Um, and I'm not navigating two windows. I'm only sharing one browser. I have this pre-made. So this is just sort of something that kept things simple. I love the tip, I'll talk about this in our next activity, of making these things in therapy with your client. Um, I know that Kate Ahern, I didn't link, I should have linked her. So AAC through Motivate Model Move Out of the Way is a Facebook group that she runs. She has amazing tips and she talks a lot about when you're gonna be making something, do it with um, the person that you're working with. And I know Brandy Lee Wetland, someone else I should have linked, We Speak AAC, I think is for Facebook, um, that she has posted some videos and stuff about her making things with her clients. So this is going to be my little caveat. This Giphy extension, when I was searching for things, nothing terrible, but some weird things came up that I was thinking this would be so fun to do with a student. I don't know if I would, depending on their age. Um, so that's just sort of a little thing to think about. Um, and that's the Giphy. Oh, and like I said, that I put a link to this. I think I have like 10 or 11 GIFs with the lamp icons that if you click that link, it's also in the wakelet. You, it'll force you to make a copy and you can do whatever you want with it. Change it out for a different system. Change out the GIFs that you like. Share at home with families. Um, it's yours. So another thing, same thing with this one, download this activity, this music choice board, um, change out the music videos, do whatever you want to it, that's yours. So here's my person to follow for this choice board tip is Ashley Guerrero on Instagram. Um, she is not an SLP, she's a teacher and she has the most fun tech tips. She does TikTok and Instagram. Um, and so I don't do anything on TikTok. I just see her TikTok videos on Instagram, but um, they're so short. And I really like that because something I do in order to get all of these like tech tips and ideas, I definitely consume a lot of assistive tech and AAC things. If I watch a YouTube video, I put it on double the speed because I want it to be fast and I want to be able to pause if I have a question. Um, so I really like Ashley because her things are super quick and to the point she, um, made this tie-dye background, which I'm obsessed with. I think it's the background of my computer too. Um, she talks about how to make fonts and all this stuff that's like way above my head, but I can kind of do it after her tips. And she made a choice board just like this in slides. So I took her idea, I adapted it for AAC. So let's, I'm gonna show you what that looks like because then um, you will have this and you can edit it and do whatever you want with it. So. Um, this is one that I definitely tried to make geared towards older students. However, like I said, I'm in preschool, but I was thinking, I haven't shared this home yet because I just finished making it, but I am going to share it with some of my students who have older siblings because I thought that it might be something fun. Um, I am pretty sure I made sure all of these videos are um, edited for language, so you might want to double check that, um, but I think they're good. Um, but these are just kind of like pop songs, things that the kids are listening to. I know because I looked on Spotify for the top songs that people are listening to. So ask your student, what do you want to listen to? And say they make a choice. It directly links to this music video. So 
this is kind of a silly video. Um, I didn't link the video for each of them because some of the videos I thought, oh, a little iffy for therapy, but this one is pretty silly. I feel like there's a lot of language that it would elicit. Um, so I kept this one as the video, not just the song. You can edit it so that it would only play like a 30 second clip in your slide. So now how I put in kind of my AAC modeling is, okay, I stopped the video. Now we're finished and I have my little finished icon, click that. And it goes right to a modeling. You. It. So what I like about this is it's all in slides. Uh, like I said, I'm not clicking over to my chat editor. I'm not mirroring my iPad or doing anything like this. I pre-made this in between each video. It's going to have this little modeling um, thing of do you like it? And then because here's the home screen of the board, I can just take my mouse and say, did you like it or you don't like it? And so I can give a prompt like that and um, see if the student will ask the question. And then over here I can say, do you wanna do more? Let's do more videos and it'll link right back to your home screen. So it's, it's all linked together. If you download this activity, you'll kind of see how, um, how it's arranged so that you can recreate it. And this is one that I also might um, make a how-to video on because once you know how to do it, it's pretty easy. And um, this is something that is cool for therapy and I think is really cool to send home for somebody to do. So next up is lesson picks. Um, I'm really loving lesson picks. I just got a subscription, I think right at the beginning of um, March when schools closed. And I just was like, I'm learning so much new stuff about tech that I also can't really be creative <laughs> right now. So I totally appreciate all these social media things that I'm sharing and the people that are making boom cards because I just cannot do that. I wanna just take somebody else's boom card. So that's what's really cool in lesson picks is that it's basically like a library of activities. Um, and this, it's a paid subscription. I think it's $36 for the year. Um, and another great thing is that they have Lamp and Unity icons. So that's something I love using New Voice Pass, but then I'm like, copy, paste, save it here, drop it here. And if you can just have the icons built in, um, that's great. And then also somebody made this. I did not make this um, board game. And so you can just get a lot of things that already have those icons. Now, this, I was so excited. This is one of my favorite tips. This is a screenshot of my Google Slides. So this white part is the slide, and this gray part is just the area next to the slide. So Beth Poss gave me um, this tip, she said it in a webinar, that you could take a screenshot of the home screen. Um, if I were to redo this, I probably would hide some of the icons and maybe just show the ones in the game to make it a little bit um, visually easier. I just inserted a shape here. I have a how-to video. I think it's linked on the next slide of how to do this. These game pieces are movable. So you can roll a dice, move to eat, and then you see you move your high, um, highlighter to the icon eat. Then when you the next person gets on they, you can move it over to they to provide that modeling. This you have to, you can't do it in present mode. That's why I sort of shared it as a screenshot like this. Um, but it's really nice to just, again, one window for me, this is keeping it simple. Check out the Lesson Picks YouTube channel because they have a bunch of short videos, just the way I like them, um, about how to do some of these things. You download it as a PowerPoint, but then you can easily upload it as a Google slide. They have a video for how to do that and um, how to do lots of other things. And they're also just integrating spinners and dice and stuff into their game. So um, so that's pretty exciting too. Another idea using that same principle of, see this one, I kind of like how I did that better, um, with giving your student that visual cue of what your target is going to be. This is again, Google Slides. So this white square is my slide and the gray square is just the area next to the slide that is usable for you. So this is a virtual adventure that I found this canopy walk. Um, so this is again, something that's kind of fun for students who are a little older than preschool. Um, and here's where I linked using making interactive slides to use in your teletherapy. So this video, I would just play it and we start walking. I'm afraid of heights in this video actually 
made me not feel good. <laughs> but you play it and then pause it. And even without having to do like a lot of prompting or pulling up a system, we have this nice visual go. This is another point where I'm gonna plug my PRC consultant in my area because I like had a visual, I knew I had seen these before and I searched my Google Drive and I couldn't find them. So I emailed her and I was like, I'm picturing the, these visuals and it has these red arrows. And sure enough, she emailed this to me. So I'm not sure if this is online anywhere or if you're gonna wanna just email your consultant and they will send it to you. So now, here's another super fun thing. I'm checking my time. Okay, so these interactive PowerPoints, there we go, have been super, super fun. This was another connection I was really excited to make. Last week in Lauren Ender's webinar, she um, mentioned this Simply Speaking SLT Teachers Pay Teacher store. I really don't do a lot on Teachers Pay Teachers, especially right now. Anything new that I learn or that I spend money on, that I get, I really want it to be able to be used once we go back to in-person um, therapy. I don't, that was one reason why I didn't click on Boom Cards for like two months because I was like, I cannot learn something that I'm never gonna use again. But then I kept, my friends kept saying, no, you will use Boom Cards at school, you gotta check it out. So I finally did, and I'll show some here. Um, but when I saw these games, I thought that they were super fun and cool. And then Brooke happened to message me like two days later a question about um, if these games can be used in Google Meet. So then we went back and forth on a bunch of things like, oh, well, would this work with your game? Okay, well, would this work in your platform? Um, and so I made a video about how to use them because there are some like tips and tricks. These um, interactive PowerPoint games can't just be opened into a Google slide, much to my dismay because I want only things to be in Google. Um, so this was the first time I ventured out of Google Slides to go to PowerPoint and teletherapy, and it was a big hit. And so, okay, two more things about these. I like these games because you can see that they might be reminiscent of another game that you're familiar with, um, which are games, they're like preschool games that I play in, have played in person with my kids. So to be able to say, remember our pirate game and remember how we use these words has been really fun um, to then show them like a digital version of the game. And of course, I am making them all dual purpose for modeling AAC. So I'll show you what it looks like. So you go to this, when you click the sword, it comes up as this sword page, and you can put a picture underneath each sword. So I just, right with icons, entered in a bunch of icons from LAMP so that then this can just kind of be the prompt for my student that is within the game. So I'm only managing and navigating one thing. It does make it more work ahead of time, but now that it's done, I can just use it like this forever. Um, so I'm also, when I'm thinking about modeling and kind of providing these cues for students, I'm not saying like, okay, that word is stop, say stop. I tried to pick some words because I'm not showing the exact icon sequence. So that also helps me not have an expectation for what I want my students to say, but it leaves it more open-ended. So for like the dog one, I would say, you know, I'm not telling them say come for no reason, but I'd say, oh, look, there's a dog. Remember what's, um, you know, if you touch the dog, then the animals show up. What's your favorite animal? What animals do you have at your house? Do you have a dog? Um, and for the hammer one, it could be work or break or things that they've um, been doing at school. But because I think this is sort of a positive of not doing that dynamic display where you're showing them the exact sequence is that it can kind of leave it open-ended. And if my student doesn't say something related to that, you know, that's fine too. So I think that there's times for doing that dynamic display and then also times where you don't. Um, you can just make it a little easier on yourself. So let's finish. So there we go. That's my example for interactive PowerPoints. This is so cool. When I first saw this, 
it blew my mind. So Maggie Judson made this at the bookish SLP is her Instagram. She shares the best, most creative. This is one of my favorite AAC accounts to follow. Um, I, everything she does. I love it. This is what I chose to share because like I said, I thought it was so awesome. It's called thing link and it's a website. So you can make your own thing link. If you have a different system that you want to do, Maggie has made them. This is the word power 96. And she has also made one for Liam, um, lamp words for life. So I'm not going to show the interactive part. Um, but I think you should check it out. And of course it's linked here that have all of these little circles, if you touch on it, it opens a YouTube video that is related to that word. Um, so again, this is a really awesome alternative to that activity plus modeling. It's an activity within modeling. So your student on the other side could be saying, feel or come or eat. And there's so many things linked to pretty, most of the things that they say are gonna link to something they say bad. And okay, let's click the link and let's see what it is. And again, this is something that can be used in teletherapy and also that I would send this home to families for carryover. I think that this is just super fun. Okay, Jamboard, another one of my favorite things. So I have a video on using Jamboard and I think at the exact same day, myself and then Jennifer Schubring made, um, discovered Jamboard and got so excited that we made videos. And we were both like, oh, if I knew you were gonna make yours, if I knew you were gonna make yours. So you've got lots of Jamboard um, information. So Jennifer um, has a Facebook page and a website where she shares so much good information. If you click on one of her things, you are going to get, like your lessons are planned for the rest of the month. So she has, if you click on that link, the building AAC link, it will take you to one of her blog posts on I like slot where she has like 50 slides in Google slides of activities to go with the book. I like slot. There is reading, there's writing, there's math activities. There are AAC language activities. Almost every time she shares something, there's boards for multiple systems. So like so much work is done for you. Um, there's just so much there. Um, I'm specifically just pulling out the Jamboard because that would be like a whole nother webinar um, <laughs> in and of itself. And also a special ed teacher I work with reached out to me and she said that she did some of the stuff from I like slop with third graders and that it was a huge hit. So keep that age range in mind. And I'm just gonna give a video of what her, the Jamboard specifically looks like from all of her activities. So you can, it's an interactive whiteboard. You can drag things in. So she drags things in to make the slot. This is a bingo game. So the, the card will pull down and it said pigeon. So then I just used the pen to, we both would cross off pigeon. So again, even just within the Jamboard, there's so much here. Let's see, you cross it out. Then there's a little literacy, reordering the words. There's directions for each one of these. There's some math, we're tallying. Would you eat slop? Would you not eat slop? Here's another math thing with a dice. Um, so she also has one of these for Pete the cat. Um, so that is, again, a really nice um, option. This reminds me, Jamboard is a Google product. So you can see up here, I can say share. So if you're video conferencing platform does not have the ability to share mouse control with your student you can share it with their email if they have a gmail and then you can both you could both have the jamboard opened up so you wouldn't present your screen or share your screen with them you just both would have your videos pulled up and your jamboard pulled up and you could be interacting with it that way so jamboard i think is a perfect thing to do with that um, for dragging things in um, you can also do this with your slides. So like that music choice board activity, you could just share with your student and then they could be the one controlling it. Um, in terms of mental load, screen control is something, I don't have, really have the option to do it because of Google Meet. Um, but even if I could, I don't know if I would go down the road of screen control because it just, again, feels like another thing that I have to manage for people who are doing it and loving it. I'm 
impressed by you, I guess also because I am working with younger kids. But I think that just to kind of, I'm just giving myself permission to not even go down that road with my students when I know it seems like I have that ideal teletherapy session in my mind that I've seen somebody videotape on Instagram. And our therapy doesn't have to look like that to be really good and really engaging and fun for kids. So that's just sort of my, my forgiveness for myself. Okay, so when I did finally open Boom Cards, I got Rachel Natal's Boom Cards, um, which are very fun and simple and easy to use. When I first went in, people were saying, oh, there's lots you can get for free. So I just downloaded tons of them and then I got overwhelmed and I shut it out and I didn't go back in. So I really like Rachel's because of course she's an AAC SLP. So I know what she makes is going to be core word focused and it's going, I'm not gonna have to think about it. Of course, a lot of activities and a lot of things we find on Boom Cards can be used with our students using AAC. I like this because I don't have to think about it. I don't really have to check it out ahead of time. I know I'm gonna get some simple core words and um, I'm gonna be able to use the activity. My kids have been really liking this. Um, so I, I really like these on the Boom Store and I think I have a couple others. Um, Wordless shorts. So this is something that was day one of teletherapy. I started doing wordless shorts and I really love it for teletherapy. So I was going to mention it in my webinar. Warren, of course, did also last week and then she shared, this is just a screen grab from a document that she has that's super well organized and it's all the wordless shorts that you could want. Because also I got through like a couple and then I didn't really know how to find more. This is how you find more. It is linked in the Wakelet. It's linked in Lauren's resources from her webinar. And this is her Facebook page. Again, Lauren Enders is another person that you should follow on Facebook. She basically collects everything good out in the AAC world and puts it into one feed. So like I have her Facebook page pinned to like see this first so that I know I can get kind of all my good AAC stuff when I open my Facebook. And so, Using wordless shorts, um, you can embed YouTube videos into, I should have linked a video on how to do this, but you can say in Google Slides, insert and insert a YouTube video into your slide. So then you can do that trick that Beth Post did where you put your core board or your visuals next to, or like I showed in that music video one where I had the word, the icon finished, you could embed it into slides, shrink it down and then put some icons around it so that you're not kind of opening YouTube, opening something to model. Um, it keeps it a little cleaner. You don't see all the other videos on YouTube that can be distracting. Um, so that is a nice tip that I like there. So now, all about books. So I really love Epic. I like you can do a document camera. That's something I also have given myself permission to not do, is to not learn how to turn my cell phone into a document camera. Um, so I like having something like Epic or Books are two websites where you can get books. Um, a trick on YouTube that I talked about in the video I made yesterday, um, where any book that you want, like say you want to get Dear Zoom and you want it to be on, um, on the computer, it's probably on YouTube. So if you pull up your YouTube, you can either even insert into it into your slides, then you pause it and you use um, your keyboard to click forward. And it will basically, every time you click, kind of turns a page. So that is um, a good uh, little trick to do. Also on Teachers Pay Teachers, or you could make this yourself, of making a book in PowerPoint or in Google Slides, um, and inserting AAC icons in that way. Of course, we know that if we're targeting literacy and we want students to be reading the words, we're not going to um, put the icons with it. Um, but if you want your student to be finding those motor pathways on their device, then adding the icons can be a great idea. Like this example from my friend and colleague, Allison Rotolo, she has a Teachers Pay Teachers 
and boom cards where she uses her dog to make these really cute activities. She's also one of my preschool colleagues who um, specializes in AAC too. So you know you're gonna find some things that are appropriate for younger kids and um, that will be good for AAC users. This is free on Teachers Pay Teachers, which I believe this link will take you to this free book. It's really cute, it's look up, look down. And so we have our book that we're gonna read and then there's just that visual. So again, like I said, the student I was working with this morning with the gifts um, that it prompted his mom just to provide that modeling. This is again, something that would be perfect. Just pull up one window, you have your book and you have that prompting. And if you do need to explicitly say like, oh, every time I turn the page, can you just model the words on the page? Um, then that should be pretty easy and manageable, right? So, AAC backgrounds. This is from Kristen Powell at the Daily Dose of Speech on Instagram. This is another one of my absolute favorite Instagram. She shares um, just super fun, easy ideas, um, and I love to follow her. This one idea that I'm sharing is the idea of these backgrounds. So you've probably seen a lot of people doing these green screen backgrounds. Again, this is something that I have let go of. Maybe next week that I'll go go for backgrounds. A cool tip is that for those of you who are not using Zoom, I, saw, I can't remember where I got this tip from, it might have been from Kristen, that you can pull up sort of that waiting room on Zoom so you don't go into a Zoom meeting. You have your Zoom website pulled up and it will show you sort of like that check out what you look like and you can check out different backgrounds before you enter your meeting. So you could say, I'm on Google Meet, I could turn off my camera on Meet and then screen share my practice Zoom with an AAC system as my green screen background so that you don't have to be on Zoom to do something like this. If I do try green screen backgrounds and I do do something like this, I'm picturing I would do it as a pre-recorded video and do it asynchronously at least to practice, send it out to my students and see how they like. Um, I think it looks like Kristen's doing it here um, with a student that she has like this light up stick. So then she's pointing around to the different things that she's modeling, which I think is just super fun. And that's a creative idea. And teletherapy chicks, is that something else I should have linked? But um, AAC chicks has also an Instagram for teletherapy, maybe like telechicks or something like that. Um, that they also did this. And I thought that it was just super creative. This one over here, um, where it's not the lamp background, Kristen is sharing the descriptors. That background is on Rachel Madel's website. It's free, so I linked that because that's something that's cool. Um, and then Kristen's sort of, she's pointing to size. So if you have an object, then you could say, okay, what size is it? What do you think it smells like? And then you could point around, and I just think that would be really fun and engaging for students. Another thing you could do with that descriptors is if you put like a YouTube video or a picture in the middle of it, in slides maybe, um, or whatever you wanna use, if you're in PowerPoint, however you wanna do it. So you could be playing the video, pausing it, and then talking about sort of the descriptors around it. Um, I also saw that suggestion on Facebook. I wish I had remembered all the things I would've done um, to link more people. Uh, I just think that I've gotten so many awesome ideas from other people that I really wanna share, uh, give credit to everybody that um, has been helping me during this time. So this is sort of one of my last slides is organizing and structuring your teletherapy. So I mentioned that I organize my things in Google Slides. This is what it looks like. It honestly, figuring that one thing out in terms of mental load, every single thing, each of my students has a Google Slide. So it's their initials. And when I pull it up, it does, it, Right now they have like 10 or 15 slides. And so they just wanna keep rewatching the same videos. Like they wanna watch this um, Roland Safari. So I can say at the end of my session, now that I've created a bunch of these things that I've been using, I'm not really creating new things. I'm sort of shuffling what I've already done. I'd like to do an Epic, a book on Epic. Um, and so I might switch that up every week, but you can see the music choice board would live within slides. I'm embedding this YouTube video into slides. I'm embedding this YouTube video into slides and that one has a nice little um, side where I'm modeling. 
This is a less than picks activity where this magnifying glass just moves around and we find different lamp icons. Pretty simple. I put that inside so I'm not clicking out. Anything that I do need to go outside of slides for, um, I just make this a hyperlink. So I pick the book that I want to do in my next session and I'm putting a screenshot just so that I can remember or if I'm giving, I now usually giving my students a choice of what do you want to do first? A video, a book, listen to music so that they have that visual and they can use sort of that side of my slides where it's organized as a choice board. And I put the link so that I, when I finish my teletherapy for the day, I'm really trying to plan, which it's going quick now because I have all these things in slides. So I can just grab a new Epic book. Um, I can, again, like this, I have my interactive PowerPoint so that I have to leave slides for it. But I just put, this is a slide where I put a screenshot of the activity so that my students can see what the choice is. And then even I can just remind myself of, oh yeah, that is something that I had planned to do. So what's this? Yes, there's a YouTube video for organizing in slides. We're finished. Um, this is where you can find me if you want to. Like I said, I'm happy for people to email me um, or to ask me questions on Instagram. I am. I'm using Instagram for kind of making these like shorter, sort of my pace, quick, small teletherapy tech tips. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. You can go to this bit.ly again to get all the weeklet, these slides, um, and that QR code, of course, will take you um, to the slides. So I think that's it. Thank you, Sarah. That was incredible. Lots of good comments. People are really excited about this. Oh, good. Um, and again, I'm seeing lots of people who are saying this is really helpful. Um, I'm oh. just curious, those of you that are on the line in the little question box, if you're doing teletherapy now, would you just type a yes? I would love to see how many people, oh my gosh, there are so many yeses coming across there. Wow. Lots of people are doing teletherapy now. Someone said they just finished. So that's great. Um, the other thing is I want to give a plug in for Sarah's YouTube channel. She's mentioned it, uh, but it's amazing. So if you haven't had a chance to go to her YouTube channel and look at that, several people asked questions about how to do certain things. And I think that you have a lot of information, a lot of easy how to's on your YouTube channel. So um, if you want to know how to do something, I would go there first and see if you can find it. So, yes. yeah, we're getting people who commented they have seen your, their, your channel and it's been very helpful. Oh, good. And a lot of times if somebody asks me a question and it's something I want to figure out, I'll say, give me a couple of days and I'll send you a link for a YouTube video. So if it's something that a lot of people are wondering about, I'll definitely <laughs> add a video on it. Okay. That's great. So you're taking requests, you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great. All right. All right, guys. Thanks again for your attendance. And thank you, Sarah. Yes, thanks, Beth.